Hey everyone, this is Derek from Badgerland Burning. Today we're with Christine and John who run the Potted Owl Facebook group and YouTube channel. And they are out in West Bend and they actually have a family of owls that nested in their flower pot uh, named River and Oscar, which is quite a cool thing. And it's captivated a lot of people. They've come to, you know, see what's going on and share in, in the journey. So how are you guys doing and how did this come to be? Oh, uh, well, we're doing pretty good. It's been busy and overwhelming, um, especially since neither one of us were social media gurus before this. But um, it was March or yeah, March 12th. I came home from work and I just happened to look outside and I see this perfectly carved crater in our flower pot. And I was stunned because we're four stories up and this building at one point um, was a factory. So each story is a rather large story. And um, I had taken a picture of it and I had asked people around the building and everybody was surprised. Nobody could figure it out, but whatever it was, was gone. So I just sort of blew it off. And the next morning, it was a beautiful morning out. And I thought, oh, it'd be nice to get a breeze in the house. It was really warm that week. Yeah, it was a nice week. So I opened the door and I step out onto the balcony and I literally stepped right in front of her and she flew up out of the flower pot and her wings were flapping in my face. Her talons came up and she was screeching. I, of course, started screeching mm -hmm. and then got my wits about me and jumped back into the house right away. Thank God she didn't follow me into the house. But she did go sit in a tree very close by and continued to screech. And I thought, wow, that was crazy. And so I was taking some pictures of her with my phone and I thought, well, that's it. I, I scared her away. And then that night we were sitting here watching TV and the door was so cracked open a little bit. And all of a sudden we hear this thump <laughs> on the balcony. And so we, we thought, no way. And so we shut out all the lights and everything. We're kind of creeping along the floor. We peek around the door and she was in a dead stare right at us. There was no sneaking up on her. Those were the first pictures and, on Instagram. Yeah. And so that's where it all started. And um, then when she, she sat there for a while, then she flew away again and we thought, okay, again, well, that that's it. And then John's like, no, there's an egg. And I'm like, get in the house. She's going to kill us. <laughs> you know, we just need to get away from her egg. And, so, and then a week later came the second egg and she's just been out there since that first day. So okay. we don't know why she picked our balcony. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's incredible. Do you, have you guys heard great horns calling in the neighborhood? So you knew they were around or did it just kind of pop up? Um, well, we hear, um, we've heard there was a little owl that had lived in a pine tree close by for a few years. And I, I don't remember. And, um, but then we hadn't heard that owl in a, in probably in the last year or so, but um, we only heard there's it. a lot of wildlife out here. So it's, it's not a common, I mean, uh, one winter I even saw a bobcat, bobcat out here, you know, because a lot of things follow the river for food and especially in the winter. And but I was stunned that, yeah, here's this great horned owl now living on our balcony. Yeah, we, we see a lot of eagle and osprey, but yeah, I, I don't know if I've ever, I mean, I've never seen an owl in, in nature. They're just so elusive. But our um, My uh, my brother-in-law sent us an owl picture from a hunting trip he was on, but I, I've never seen one in nature. I don't think. No, we've heard them, but yeah. Yeah, well, that's a big step from, you know, never seeing one to now getting to see two every day. <laughs> yeah. so that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. And so when was the decision to, you know, start doing more of the social media stuff? Because the Potted Owl Facebook group has grown to over 8,000 people, which is pretty wild yeah. to go on there and people from around the U.S. Are, is it people from around the world or mostly the United States? Uh, around the world, because apparently we were trending on Google in New Zealand. Interesting. I think... I think yeah, I think the watershed moment for me was when uh, I, I was just on the couch looking at it on my phone and I, I thought I was watching a movie or something just because they were talking back and forth. And when they talk, there's something like almost cinematic about it. I mean, I, I really thought I was watching a TV show and then I'm like, oh, no, this is literally just happening five feet from my couch and I'm watching it on my phone and I'm like. Yeah, no, I think other people are going to want to see this. Well, in my moment came, I was going through so much battery life on my phone every day because between friends and family and everybody wanting constant updates. 
And I think the drawing line for me was um, there were people who are in clubs, like wine clubs, book clubs, and all their clubs wanted updates now. And I'm like, okay, I, I can't be texting oh. all these people. We got to figure out how to do this on social media. I, I sort of knew I was in trouble too. And I was like spending like hours just watching her turn her head. Okay. And, and I'm like, we don't, I mean, let's hope the babies come, but like, we don't even have babies yet. And I'm still, I'm pretty captivated yeah. as it is now. And once the babies come, it's going to be a whole different ballpark. I, I don't yeah. Know. So. So it's, it's just so we we've been enjoying it so much, and I think that's one of the main things is like I don't, you know, we're doing all this social media stuff, and we I've been posting every day, and, but I'm like we really do have to remember we do have a great horned owl, this force of nature on our balcony sitting right know? there in front of us yeah, yeah it's i mean it, it is really like having a forest in your living room every night when she starts hooting um to oscar because we do have a microphone out there too to help enhance the sound because the cameras just weren't quite doing enough sound for us and so it is sort of funny how much we do here sitting loud and clear right in our living room so it's pretty cool yeah does that keep you up at night at all no, we don't hear her in our bedroom. We well, did buy some killer new. Uh, we did buy some killer new windows from Pella last year, so that probably helps. But <laughs> <laughs> and how has your life changed as far as not spooking the owls and trying to, you know, accommodate God. where they're living now? Yeah, everything has changed. I went and even bought one of those little push Bissell vacuum cleaner things. It's a manual thing, like from the 1970s that my grandmother <laughs> used to use. Because um, I won't run the vacuum cleaner in the main part of the house anymore. And uh, just the lighting, especially at night when they're ready to go hunt, we know about when she's going to take off. And we keep the lights a little bit lower in the house. And um, she doesn't like uh, loud banging action movies, but <laughs> she doesn't seem to mind British murder mysteries. So we've been watching a lot of Brit Box and Acorn TV lately. <laughs> so. Yeah, just the noises. Like she doesn't like it. She'll turn her head if we drop something on the hardwood floor. That that'll catch her attention. Um, so we just try to do things or not do things that we know uh, sidetrack her. So, like I um, I fight a mix uh, some green drinks during the week. I do it in the bathroom now. <laughs> Yeah, we don't run the Vita mix in the kitchen. Well, and, uh, Our the, kitchen's right there, and it's just too loud. So. The the the, the a stove fan i don't think i run as much either she, we don't run it on high she doesn't like if the, the stove vent. fan is on high so the we have vent, to keep that low yeah, yeah. the vent is right by her uh, necessary yeah we, we've changed everything how we live how we cook how we clean everything has changed to accommodate them right now yeah that's pretty wild uh what's one thing now that you've gotten to see them up close that's really surprised you um the whole thing has been. I, I think but... the, the um, how um, their personalities. Like yeah. I, I didn't think they would have that much personality. Yeah. Like the the two of them watching the two of them together is pretty pretty special. And um, yeah, like I said, when the babies come, I can't imagine. The, I mean, she's already pushed them off the balcony once. One one uh, there's a winter storm where they're mouse hunting. Oh, yeah. And she pushed him off the balcony. She was mad. And uh, I mean, I don't know if she was mad or she just was a little frustrated because she can, was getting snowed on all, all night long. But uh, well, I think the other thing for me, too, is, you know, she's this fierce predator and she just even has a look about her like, you know, when the crows start making a lot of noise at her, she doesn't budge. She is so stoic and she sits there like one day I will eat you. And nothing is fearful to her. But then when she comes back and she has to sit back on her nest, she's so careful and so gentle around her eggs. And everything is just methodical and slow. So you have this fierce predator, but then you have this gentle side to like, you know, I'm a mother too kind yeah, of thing. When you, so when you watch her walk around her eggs, it's like, it's crazy. And that, She's very and that, careful. And then she'll walk around with the chipmunk in her mouth. You know, just like yeah, drop it on the balcony. Like, uh, where's Oscar going? Pick it up and go run after Oscar. You know, it's, yeah, it's um, they're they're so wild and um, 
It's really interesting. It's yeah. just really fascinating watching their movements. They're so calculated too with everything they do. I yeah. mean, like they don't they don't step on the balcony without thinking about it. You know, it's it's sort of cool. Yeah, and I'm sure other people appreciate, you know, getting those insights as well and you guys sharing all that with them. How many cameras do you have out kind of on the balcony now? We're on four cameras. We added a fourth one this week. Yeah. We felt we needed more floor coverage because we didn't have a lot of floor coverage in the balcony. And it was a good thing we did because this morning uh, when I was going through some of the footage overnight, um, she did something different I hadn't seen her do before. She jumped onto the balcony and she actually walked around it on the oh. outside to kind of look before she jumped up on the railing. So I don't know what she heard or saw, but I was like, ooh, she's like on patrol there. You know, she would have done our military proud with that move. So, <laughs> so we wouldn't have caught that otherwise. Yeah, yeah. and the, the floor uh, camera is really nice now. Yeah. Awesome. You guys probably have some of the best security in the neighborhood with four cameras and a and an yeah. owl out there. <laughs> it's funny because I don't go out there anymore and but what I do when I have to like move a camera or something I'm like oh my god this balcony is so small <laughs> <laughs> but we have like these four we have different angles one really has a nice uh river shot one has a really nice uh just a nice uh egg shot and then um we have the wide angle for the ra the whole railing and then this fourth one that we have now is our is a really nice shot of the ground because they pass food uh, they pass food between one another a lot on on the balcony yeah. so getting to see that now is going to be really nice yeah. especially when they start getting busier and the babies come so not only with the cameras do we have so much more security because we do see the surrounding area so anything people do out in that field or by our balcony or under the balcony um we hear and see and with all the neighbors on high alert now, because everybody's involved with this. I mean, everybody loves River and Oscar. Um, it's funny because there was a, a guy out there one day who had uh, this giant lens camera. And you you could tell he was excited. He, he could see the owl. And then all of a sudden he went to go take the picture and you could see it dawned on him. He was facing that very strong, powerful lens towards somebody's home. <laughs> and he, I think he took like maybe two shots and then bolted. <laughs> and we do keep our blinds closed because we assumed that people would be wanting pictures of her. But yeah. I'm like, so yeah, we do sometimes I go on to the social media, remind people that this is private property. It is somebody's home and, you well, know. We, we know there's gonna be people. But yeah. I mean, we just have to get used to Yeah, it. and uh, most people just show up like with their phones and go, oh, hey, there's River and, you know, but um, I but I think that the real photographers with the big lenses are a little bit more conscientious of it, but it was sort of funny when it, you could tell the moment it occurred to him what he was doing. It was just sort of funny, but. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough balance when you're in a neighborhood because you're like, this does yeah. look a little sketchy, but like I also want to see some birds. <laughs> it's a fine, know, it's yeah. a fine line. He just, wanted, uh, he just wanted a shot of river. That was fine. We didn't mind. It was just funny well, watching him on the camera. I don't know if you know, but they they these uh, birds potentially might be the lithia birds, which were in a brewery uh, of less than a mile from uh, where we are now, um, but. There, there is a possibility that there's a history to to the two birds. They they've been in town potentially for the last five years. Um, so and it's kind of a tragic history. Um, yeah, that's what yeah. I was reading. It said they had two possibly failed nests in the past. If it is the same pair, so this would be their third. Yeah, third try. they weren't banded, so we won't know for sure. But we are kind of dead center of what would have been that particular set of owls' territory. So it stands to reason. So a lot of people were asking us if we were going to band the baby owls and track these owls. And we had contacted some wildlife centers and uh, who's, who specialized in raptor care and rescue. And they had contacted some federally licensed banders who have decades of experience. And uh Basically, it, they would just be banded if 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 John and I wanted to have it done because I looked into to see if there was research needed or if there was a purpose other than to do it just to do it. And um, 
So if, if this, when it came down to, it would just be, if we wanted to do it and I said, well, what are the pros and cons? I mean, it would be kind of cool to track them, but they said the one big con is that it's it stress. will scare River and Oscar off the nest. It's a big stressor on the parents and they do come back, but it, it does cause them stress. And I didn't, I, we decided it wasn't worth their stress to do that. So we, our, our foremost, our biggest goal has always been just to let them be wild birds and to have, ex and try to do everything we could to protect them, to have a successful brood, be especially if these, they are the Lithia breed owls, I, they've I, had so much tragedy, so uh, just, we're not going to do it. Uh, just by the way they move, I mean, they, they know this neighborhood pretty well. I mean, I think you can just sort of, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's they, they the are, sense. Uh, yeah. it does seem like they're uh, very familiar with the area though. So I, I can't, you know, I, I, the less we stress them, the better. I, we just, yeah. we mostly just want to leave them be and be mother nature, be with mother nature and be one of God's creatures because we we don't really we we don't treat her like a pet or anything like that. Yeah. I know people mention the word pet sometimes and we're like, no, she's a force of nature. She's like the bear or the salmon. Like she's just she's such a beautiful thing. Her and Oscar both you just I don't know. Yeah, well it's uh definitely an exciting thing to check out and I know everyone who follows is gonna be waiting for the eggs and to see what happens and hope that you yeah. know everything is successful. What's the best way people can follow you and support you guys? So we got the, the YouTube page, uh, the Potted Owl YouTube page. We have uh, Instagram. Uh, we have uh, TikTok. And it's all linked and to... Facebook. And Facebook. Yeah, it's all linked to our Facebook group page and the Facebook uh, main page. Uh, try to post every day just to show you guys the movements. And the first egg should hatch anywhere from today to the 19th. So this starting today, within the next week, the first egg should hatch. And the second egg was dropped seven days later. So I'm expecting that a week later, but. Yeah, I keep up with the post daily though. So there's usually at least one, or, I, I try to do at least three posts a day, so. Cool, and Christine, you mentioned that, you know, after the owls hopefully successfully raise the chicks and leave, you'd like to keep posting content on the pages too so once yeah. people follow them they can still see other stuff you guys are doing as well right right that's what our that's what our goal is i mean this all came up so suddenly but i have i've been a hobbyist with wildlife photography in general and we were it's funny on the last trip we were talking about doing more video you know video sort of becoming the new photography and um so that's our goal is to hopefully keep it going for like wildlife in general so we'll see where it yeah. goes. This all came out of nowhere for us. So well, we, we just like, like I said, we just enjoy every day. Yeah. We just, every day we get to spend with the uh, uh, river and ask her, we just appreciate. I mean, if they fly away tomorrow, they do, but it's as long as they're here, we're going to enjoy them. Well, and we're hoping that if they have a successful brood, because they might um, come back. They might come back. Uh, the reality is, their goal is to populate their species and um, they are opportunistic nesters. So if she has a successful brood here and that pot is going to stay right where it's at, we're not moving that pot ever again and it'll never have another geranium in it. It's just going to have hopefully more owl eggs in it. So hopefully she comes back, but at the end of the day, it's wildlife and she can choose to do whatever she wants to do. So yeah. We have no idea. <laughs> well, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us. If you're you guys are interested, make sure to check out the Pot at Owl Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube as well, and follow for you know more yeah. updates about the owl, and then hopefully you know the wildlife after that as well. All right, cool. thank you. Thanks. Cool. Thanks, guys. Yeah.